Welcome back to Fast Monty's Garage. Today we're going to discuss exactly how I designed this sheet metal bracket in CAD software for the last episode, which was a remote oil filter installation. Now I breezed right through how to do this in CAD because I figured it would be best served as a separate video. Now, those of you part of the channel know that I added the join button below. We have the new full Monty Club available for those of you that want um, pretty much priority comments for me or if you want to escalate anything via email, I need a way to force rank it. But this video in particular is going to make more sense of why those higher levels exist on the join membership because I can help you design your own bracket if you're a member, right? So otherwise, you can use the same tools I'm using today. Most of them are free, by the way, to use to design your own bracket. Feel free, I'm gonna coach you through it today. So let's get started with what's going on with this bracket. Now here's um, an image of the oil filter and bracket all mounted up, it looks fantastic, but you notice that little area underneath the body, that curved frame section. I looked at that at first and I said, you know what, I can easily fabricate something, make it out of cardboard at first, cut it out of steel, bang the hell out of the steel, drill holes in it, yeah, most people know how to do that. But I wanted to use my CAD experience from 25 years ago. Yeah, I used to use SolidWorks 25 years ago. Can you believe that? Like version nine, I, something crazy. Anyway, I needed to get retrained. I also wanted to find software that's free. Now, that area of the frame, I could have easily taken measurements and tried to model it up, but I wanted to find a way to scan that section and put it into CAD. So I started researching that and the, the best thing to do is get a laser scanner. But those things cost a lot of money. Just a basic one is like three grand or something like that. I'm not gonna do that. So I started to Google some more and I found uh, this software called Kiri, Kiri Engine. Here's, here's a snapshot of it. There is a free version and a paid version. I'll go through that uh, in a little bit but I wanted to utilize the free version. And that software was developed basically for those of you that like doing 3D printing. You can actually scan an image like on a turntable, just take a bunch of pictures, it stitches all the pictures together, gives you a solid object file, and you can put it in a 3D printer and print it. Pretty slick. So I said, you know what? I wonder if that would work on my car project. And it did. So I'll show you that in a second. After that, I wanted to see if it would go into... Um, the solid modeling software I found called Onshape. So we're gonna go through that as well today. And then we're gonna use my new favorite company to make this called Send Cut Send. Those of you who saw the last video, it came out of the box like this. Tapped holes and everything. So let's go ahead and show you what I had to do under the car on that frame section and go from there. All right, here we go. So uh, the app specifically says it does not like black surfaces. Uh, so I went ahead and taped everything with blue masking tape. I even taped up here because hopefully we can get an image imported and so I know where to build my solid model. Um, so there we go. So the app, the free app version, I can take up to 70 pictures. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and just go around in different angles and we'll see what happens. So after you get all your pictures, it'll ask you what resolutions you want, but most importantly, what file format to use. And I'm gonna go with OBJ, object file, because that's compatible with my CAD software, supposedly. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload it. A few minutes later, oh my gosh, look at this. Wow, okay, that's upside down. Look at that. That is freaking amazing for free? Are you kidding me? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and figure out how to get this solid model on my computer and we'll go from there. Welcome to the world of 3D modeling. This is how all mechanical engineers design parts nowadays. There's a couple big reasons. One is you can actually on the fly change a dimension. Let's call this 350 and it updates the part. So you can assign relationships, 
and it parts update accordingly. Then you can pull 2D prints off these parts for a machinist to make. Pretty awesome. So if we jump over to an assembly, we can actually see if parts work together or not. How cool is that? So we're gonna implement those two features. And before we jump to that, I wanna show you what this is. This is actually called Onshape. This is one of the only softwares I know of that is cloud-based and has a free option. Obviously, that's what I'm using. I'm a hobbyist. I'm sure most of you guys are too. So I signed up for the free one, but this is a legit CAD software. Look at those prices per year, per user. Wow. So uh, once you get in here and sign up for your account, you can actually go through a lot of learning tutorials, which is what I did. Most of them are free, but some you do have to pay for if you want to get serious. Now let's go ahead and jump into what we're doing. And this is the import we did of our frame. I mean, so far so good, right? Now the one big difference when we imported this scanned image, the difference between what we did and what a laser tool would do is the laser would bring in the actual dimensions. We have to figure out the scale. So the scale's way off. And what you need to do is just find a point on your frame, which is what I did. And I, I can't remember the measurement, but it was like three inches. And then you take your measurement tool here and you have to take some time to get this right because this is just a thin layer. But you find your dimension. And I think the dimension on my frame was three inches. You figure out the ratio and you go into your translate tool and make that adjustment to the scale and it updates accordingly. And once we've done that, we can now start adding some uh, structure to this. So I know that on the frame in the car, this area right here is perfectly flat because I welded in a piece of flat material. So I took some dimensions and I went ahead and made the frame like that. So now I know where my fixed points are, the space I have to work with. So here's that transmission brace. And the next step here is we need to go ahead and model the actual oil filter and the housing and the fitting on the end. And that was painful. So I had to model all these up. Moroso wouldn't share the solid model for obvious reasons because it would probably get made in China. So went ahead and did this. And in assembly view, just like before, I can also assign relationships. So there's the threaded length. So I need to have make sure I have enough room in the back. I also need enough room in the front fitting to fit it in. So now I can go ahead and put it in the full assembly. And that's what it looks like just floating in space there. And again, I can make sure I have enough room for the filter and the fitting to go on the end. Next step here, the what we need to make is this bracket to go from this surface to our complex curve. So what I was able to do is generate a plane, they call it, because in solid modeling, it's like extruding and then cutting, like imagine you're cutting with a machine tool. So I, I basically drew a profile and created this bracket. And that bracket is sheet metal. If we just go to the bracket view, I went ahead and put tapped holes in here for our fasteners and the slots, as you guys know, and it knows this is sheet metal. So there's a bend radius here. It knows how much the material deforms, it puts reliefs in. It's a very powerful sheet metal tool. And we take this and make a flat file. So there's our flat piece of sheet metal, laser cut before bending. Assuming everything is where we want it to be, we just have to export this as a DXF file. No, obviously remember where you save it because now we're gonna jump to, to send, cut, send and get this made. Welcome to Send, Cut, Send. This is a fast prototyping house, mostly flat parts that require CNC, laser cutting, water jet cutting, and then if it's sheet metal, they can do some bending work for you. So that's what, exactly what we want. Go ahead and click on Get Started. Sign up there. I'm already in there, of course. So we're gonna browse for our DXF file. Let's import that baby. Give it a few seconds. And there's our flat file. We can look at the 3D version, but that's it as flat. We want inch. Let's confirm that. Now we can pick our materials. This is really neat. I want steel. 
chromoly quarter inch. Remember, I have those tapped holes. That's why I picked that thickness. So we go to next. What bending do we want? Yes. So there's two bend lines here. Why don't we just go ahead and do 45, bend it up. Yep. See like that? 45. Bam. 2D file still looks flat, doesn't it? So 3D, good way to verify it. Say done. Tapping, yes please. I want the 5 16 18 in those holes and they're highlighted, so we're good. Two taps, that's correct. Go to next. We can do no finish and that's okay because what will happen if you do no finish, you can actually weld it and then paint it. I elected to bolt it onto the frame, so I went ahead and did powder coating and gloss black. You can do plated too if you want. I didn't do that. So we'll add to cart. So we got it in the cart and there it is. Chromoly quarter inch. Hit continue, ship that thing. Fill in all this stuff. Let's see how it turns out. All right, two weeks later, here we go. Box opening time. Oh my God, I'm so anxious. What the hell? Looking good. Oh my God. Oh, how pretty is that? Just like we drew it up. Here we are, perfect match in that section. This is why CAD modeling is so powerful because it was my first attempt, first part out of the box fit perfectly. That's why it is, it's just awesome. Now, if you guys missed the last video, I go through how to build AN lines and the adapter plate on the block. But next time we tackle this subject, I'm gonna use the Kiri engine paid version and make a sheet metal cover for this to prevent from any damage on the filter. The paid version of Kiri engine, which I didn't mention earlier, you can take up to 200 pictures and do unlimited downloads. The free version is 70 pictures and three downloads per week, which fit my budget because I only needed one download. <laughs> but the next project, I want to see how much better the resolution is with the 200 pictures. I think they use a slightly different modeling um, algorithm too. So we'll see. It's only 15 bucks. I, I give it a shot and let you guys know. Now, there's a link below for the Kiri engine. We both benefit from that. It gives you, I think, some extra downloads per week. Again, not a big deal, but the most important thing is if you guys want help designing your project or just want to contribute to the channel, all proceeds from the join button or buying a hat, go to the channel, buying more parts, more projects. Uh, members of the Full Monty Club, you guys get to chime in on what um, future videos should be for your enjoyment and to help the channel move forward. Now. I covered a lot today and it was really quick. So I know you, if you have questions, let me know. But otherwise, until next time, build them fast, drive them faster. See ya.